Hey, this is AC's 8-Bit Zone. I wanted to share a couple of things I've learned about using ZIF sockets in old retro projects. So here's one from 3M. Uh, it's very typical. I've bought others from different places online and they all follow the same sort of form factor. You close the lever, the blades slide over, and hold the IC in place. Now, this is sort of a case of a square peg in a round hole. So notice the shape of these pins. They're just flattened metal strips. The problem is, let's take a look at the board. Okay, here's the board. So I've removed the 40 pin chip and I've moved some parts to the back side of the board. That clears out space around the area for, to hold the ZIF. So here I've moved the components to the bottom side and underneath this board in the case there's plenty of, of room and clearance for, for these components to protrude downward. But notice the shape of the holes. They're round. So, so this is the first problem is this is a square peg trying to go into a round hole and they just don't fit. So, so here was one possibility. There are these round pin adapters. And uh, still, although they will go into the board very easily, they just they drop right into the board. However, they still have a, a round opening for the pins of the chip. So that wasn't going to adapt these, these squares to the board very well. So the next thing that I decided to look into was adapting it with uh, one of these style sockets. So uh, these, these have flat pins as well. However, they're, they're tapered and they're just a little bit smaller dimension. So they have no problem fitting the holes in the board. And they have sort of a leeway for round pins or square pins. So let's put one of these in the board and then seat the ZIF socket into the first socket. Well, <laughs> the next problem is these slots in the socket, although they are rectangular, the slots are parallel to the body of the socket, whereas the pins on the ZIF are rotated 90 degrees. So what I'm finding is the best thing to do is just twist each of the pins of, of the ZIF socket. Okay, so what I mean is just clamp on to the pin, twist it, and now, now we have the pin rotated 90 degrees. And just repeat that on each one of the pins in the ZIF. And now that's not going to have any problem slipping into the slots of the first socket. And when we stack the two together, it's going to look like this. So now the ZIF is seated flushly into the first socket. And uh, the first socket easily slips into the, the holes in the board. And these things always take a little bit of wiggling around to get all the pins aligned. Okay. Okay, and with enough wiggling around, I think I've finally gotten all the pins to align. Let's just check on the back side of the board. Yes, and sure enough, all of the pins are coming through. You may have to bend the pins outward just a little bit to get them all in alignment and to get them started, but uh, they, will, they will go through if you're patient and careful. Well, now I'm ready to solder these into place and, uh, and give it a try. So just thought I would share that with you. Maybe you have other tips and tricks that you've used be sure to let me know down in the comments and I uh, appreciate you watching the video. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time. Bye.